This episode of Blow Jam Presents Pod Smash is brought to you by Rosetta Stone at rosettapodcast.com slash blow. And today's show is brought to you by advanceautoparts.com. Save 20% off your first order at advanceautooffer.com slash blow. Enter promo code AAP20CAST. Hey buddies, it's Blow Jam Presents Pod Smash, the podcast that reviews podcasts. I'm your host, Delia Blow Jam, and with me is my co-host Ryan Blow Jam. Hi. If you haven't checked out our Blow Jam Yard Party episode yet, I highly suggest doing so, as well as our Tom Jolu episode. We got some more musicians coming up from our Blow Jam Bury. And also disclaimer. We returned our Zoom H6 recorder, so blast from the past. We got our H2. Ryan, don't you have fond memories of this recorder? Uh, not really. It kind of sucks, but we'll see. It's going to be a lot of work to make it sound good, but we'll try. Yeah, I have sentimental value towards it. We took it to the Speedy Fest and the Parade Day and many shows. I mean, I could go back to the Yeti. So. Oh, Yeah. We have a Yeti that we've been trying to sell for a while. Anybody so, want to buy a Yeti? Yo, any podcasters, you want to buy a Yeti for like 50, 60 bucks? Hit us up. <laughs> Call the Blow Jam headquarters tip line at 607-296-7297. It's a really good microphone. It's just uh, too much for me. Right. Yeah, we don't need it. Like if you crack a berry, you ping all the levels. That's true. <laughs> so, so it's no good for Blow Jam. Yes, we crack a lot of beers here. <laughs> You want to start off? Let's kick it off with our first segment. It's called Feed Me. We talk about our top three podcast episodes of the week. Buggy. All right, yeah, so my number one is uh, Reply All. It's a podcast about the internet. It's hosted by PJ Vogt and uh, Alex Goldman. This week's episode is called The Woman in in the Air Conditioner. uh, They did a segment called Super Tech Support. They do it once in a while. they investigate the origin of the sound of a woman walking and saying, Moshi Moshi, in an audio file that's supposed to be like a loop sound of an air conditioner to help people like fall asleep. Oh, my God. So it like actually ended up freaking this guy out. Like He downloaded the sound, he's going to sleep, and he thought someone was like breaking into his apartment because he's hearing like, footsteps. <laughs> yeah, you want that ambient noise. And then like, keys like, jingling, and then, like, like, what's going on? <laughs> he's, he's like frozen with terror, and like, there was some lady going, Moshi Moshi. Yeah, it was just really weird. So they really go down the rabbit hole and find out the origin of, like, who recorded that sound and why that happened. There was, like, millions of recordings of the weirdest things possible. Yeah, so they, they actually pinpointed the guy who made it and where he did it. And it's pretty crazy. You gotta listen to it. I saw it, and I'm like, how is this woman saying Moshi Moshi through an air conditioner? I thought it was, like, a real air conditioner. But she's saying Kashi or something like that. She's, oh, she's saying something out that actually goes to the Czech Republic. It's like, it gets crazy. It gets crazy, man. They really go. I don't want to say too much, but okay. Yeah, they go down the. I listened to like the first five minutes, and then I got distracted, so I got to revisit that. Yeah, you know how, in true reply all fashion, they they take it all the way. Yeah, they're gonna go all the way to like the other side of the world and <laughs> figure shit out. <laughs> Definitely. One time they went to India. They're like crazy, man. Yeah, for a call center, <laughs> trying to find this call center. Yeah, they're nuts. So. I love them. So check that one out. It's, it's yep. And they're very charming. The woman nice. in the air conditioner. Noise. Do you have something? I do have something. Let's go with Dumb People Town with guest Fortune Feimster. She was on Last Comic Standing, like, way back in the day. Yeah, Fortune Fancy. Yeah, you would recognize her if you saw her. She's super funny. And this episode is called Ketchup Karma. And all three stories were great. They always do three different terrible news stories where people are just super dumb, as the title suggests. First story. The super nice Good Samaritan saw this drunk dude and decided to help him out. You imagine how that turns out. He, like, gave him a ride, and craziness ensued. The second story was a bank robber uh, who left 
way too much information, personal information behind. And for the third story... Oh, yeah, he, he wrote, like, Camille Lamoni on, like, the back of, like, a bank statement or something. Yeah, with his, <laughs> with his <laughs> name. His name and his address. <laughs> it's pretty fucked up. But the end of it will really surprise you yeah, as well. Yeah, that's crazy. And the third story is really funny. Somebody stole a bottle of ketchup from a restaurant and was plagued with guilt and shame about it and thought that, like, she just racked up, like, terrible karma. She or he, who knows? Oh, yeah, I remember that. So, it's crazy. It's oh, she painted back with, like, more... Two like, bottles of ketchup. Two bottles of ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> and I know, like, describing how crazy her day was after she started. Right. That, but... And, like, just <laughs> the guilt, you know, thought it would be exciting. And, uh, yeah. So, listen to it. I don't want to give too much away. Yeah, it's interesting. What happened to her, like, the rest of that day was insane. <laughs> Your turn. All right. So, my number two is Harmontown. It's a comedy podcast with host... Dan Harmon, mostly, Jeff Davis, and Spencer Crittenden. This week's episode was called Bequeathing Teaspoons, which is kind of funny because it's a reference to uh, dropping loads. Oh, that's right. I mean, you're talking about a porn star. Every time he came, he's like, mm, dropping loads. <laughs> so, like, Dan's saying he's got a small dick, so he'd just be, like, bequeathing teaspoons. <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of funny. <laughs> but this episode was live from the Dynasty Typewriter in L.A. It, uh... He has a guest, Heather Ann Campbell, from uh, <clears throat> the podcast, How Did This Get Played? She was on the last episode. They just liked yep. her so much, she came back. She came back. Well, they do that a lot. You know, they used to have Kum- Kumail on, like, every week. And the, Kumail Nanjiani. Yeah, and uh, Bobcat Goldthwait used to be on all the time. Robin, the, Robin Williams used to always be on there, too. The guy who played Booger. Yeah, the guy who played Booger, he was there for a while. Yeah, yeah and Revenge of the Nerds, yeah. It's kind of weird. So what was good about it? So, uh... Well, beque- yeah. bequeathing teaspoons is amazing. Yeah, yeah, Heather M. Campbell, and we had Rob Schraub. He was there, too. And, uh, Dan does a funny thing where he demonstrates, like, different types of dog barks, and you have to guess, like, what the dog wanted, you know, and stuff What like the that. dog means. And it's like, what does this mean? <laughs> and it's really funny, so. But he also announced uh, the end of the podcast. The podcast is going to end in December, which is kind of a bummer. I think you said that on the last one. No, but he officially announced it. Oh, it's official. Thing. Yeah. We got to get our asses to California. Well, we already... Yeah, we did see him live. We saw him in, in New, New York. York. Yeah. It was a good one. But anyway, what do you got? Uh, I always wanted to be on Harmontown. Sometimes I pretend and fantasize that I'm, like, up there on stage just shooting the shit, drinking vodka. It's never going to happen for me. So my second pick... Is well, Blow Jam can be the next time in town, right? We gotta get a live show together. That is true. Speaking of live shows, Love It or Leave It with host John Lovett, uh, from the podcast Pod Save America. He's got his own podcast, Love It or Leave It, which is game show style. He was on a three week hiatus the whole time, just pimping out this show at Radio City Music Hall that just happened two nights ago. I'm so happy for him, and it turned out really, really well. Stacey Abrams was on. Uh, They had funny guests, and it was just a great episode. And I'm sorry, but I love when John Lovett references his boyfriend, because at first he's always like a Pulitzer Prize award-winning New Yorker journalist, my boyfriend Ronan Farrow. (laughs) (laughs) He's like, I stubbed my toe and fell down, and... This award-winning Pulitzer Prize journalist asked me if I was okay. <laughs> They've been together for like 10 years. They seem like a cute couple. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, all right. Your turn. All right, so my number three is uh, Punch Up the Jam. Every week, comedians Miel Burdell and uh, Demi Adjewigby attempt to fix a song despite having no qualifications. <laughs> this week... They did Ghostbusters. They did it live with guests Open Mike Eagle and Neil Cicerega. This is Demi's last episode. Uh, after that, Miel's going to take some time off and reconfigure the podcast, figure out how to do it. And uh, she, I guess she's moving to New York City, too, so that's different. Uh, Maybe we can go down and help her. It's a really funny and sad episode. They were live on stage at the XOXO Fest. It's really funny how they... Break down and unpack the Ray Parker Jr. classic Ghostbusters. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ghostbusters. Sounds good. But instead of uh, doing a punch-up of, like, Ghostbusters, uh, 
Well, he does it a little bit. It starts off with Ghostbusters, but he does like a mega mix of all the songs he did on the podcast as a final farewell to Neil Burdell. Aww. So hopefully... Or Demi, right? Demi, yeah. yeah. We'll probably play that before we go into the ads. Okay, yeah, I just have one more you and we'll one do more it. More. Right. We'll play that. Yes. Oh, got it. How did this get made? Ooh. Yes, this episode, they um, they always watch a bad movie and come together. Paul Shear, his lovely wife, June Diane Raphael, and Jason Manzoukas, and they appear on Pod Smash many a times because it's such a good show. Oh, it they, was a funny one. It was, yeah, mm-hmm. it was Unforgettable is the name of the movie. They all, like, love that movie. <laughs> they did. It, apparently, it's a bad movie, but they were so into it. 2017. <laughs> Starring Katherine Heigl and Rosario Dawson, who, by the way, fun fact, Cory Booker's girlfriend. And they were just so into it. And also, there was a baby in the audience, and Jason Manzoukas goes crazy over babies. Yeah, he makes them hold the baby. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> give me that baby. I want that baby. He just wants to hold babies. Yeah, if you look at the Instagram, he actually holds all the babies. Mm-hmm. He's got <laughs> pictures of Jason just holding babies. Those are good babies for not crying. Well, they probably like them. Mm, yeah. Maybe he's like a baby again. Well, babies like, well, I mean like just not crying throughout the show oh, and yeah. fucking up the recording. So, babies can be big fans well, too. You know, a little whiskey on the gums. That's true. A little bit of Benadryl never killed too many babies before. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a couple. Just to cut eyes worth it. So, what's up with that episode? It that was it? just mad funny. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Check it out. All right. So, <clears throat> we'll do some ads, but first, let's listen to that farewell mashup from Punch Up the Jams. Yeah, it's not all, every song they ever did. I, he, he did like 26 songs. There's Whoa. actually 85 episodes in the podcast so far. So. Holy shit. So he did at least 26 songs in this mashup. It's a little bit longer, so that's why I'm waiting. So, all right, let's check it out. We do not own the rights to this. Oh, yeah, I don't own the rights. There we go.
my ads. fucking god. Sorry, it was a little long. All right, I'm ads. speechless. Ads. For you, the glorious listener is a pod smash by way of blow jam. Rosetta Stone is offering a 24-month subscription for less than $8 a month. At my work, during the day, I have to speak Spanish sometimes, and Rosetta Stone helped me graduate from Lo siento, hablas inglés, to Lo siento, esta oficina está cerrada ahora, pero va a estar abierta mañana a las nueve. ¿Puedes llamar al mismo número mañana, por favor? That just means that the office is closed now. Can you please call the same number tomorrow? And that they're open at 9. So, thank you, Rosetta Stone. Now I can actually talk to peeps. So, Rosetta Stone continuously sets the standard in learning to enable people to change their world. Their main languages are Spanish, Latin American Spanish, French, Italian, German, English American. So, for all languages available, go and check out rosettastone.com slash buy now and when you're convinced and you will be you're going to go to rosettapodcast.com slash blow for your special offer to rosetta stone ryan and i own a 2002 honda civic manual transmission and it runs like a fucking gem thanks in part to advanced auto parts so for you guys Advance Auto Parts is offering 20% off your first order at advanceautoparts.com slash blow. Enter promo code AAP20CAST for 20% savings. So Advance Auto Parts is your source for quality auto parts, advice, and accessories. You could pay a shit ton for labor, but how's about you get the part and watch how to do it on YouTube? Save yourself some serious money. Plus, at 20% off, you can't beat that. Advanced Auto Parts, Inc., the largest automotive aftermarket parts provider in North America. They service both the professional installer and also, hey, DIY customers. Advance operates over 5,200 stores, over 100 World Pack branches, and serves approximately 1,300 independently owned CarQuest branded stores. Actually, there is an Advance Auto Parts legit down the street from us. It's awesome. Advance Auto Parts has the essentials from brake pads to batteries, along with all the final touch stuff that you need. So again, to save 20% off your first order, go to advanceautooffer.com slash blow. Again, that's advanceautooffer.com slash blow to save 20% off your first order. Enter promo code AAP20CAST for 20% savings. At this part of the show, we like to talk about what's new in the Blow Jam universe. Buggy, I know you have a lot that you want to talk about. Yeah, sure. Uh... What's new is that uh, we got a new washer. Washing machine, clean clothes. Pretty cool. Like, you press buttons and it makes, like, video game noises. When you finish your wash, it's like... It's all triumphant. We I should like record it. So, it. It's pretty much the most high-tech, high-tech thing we own right now, so... Uh, I also got a new acoustic guitar. Yes. Which is good, because I might do some open mics. No, you are going to do some open mics. Yes, I'm going to. And, uh... Uh, we're jamming with Matt D. from The Savage and the band Narrator. We're going to do that ne- next Sunday. Yes. I'm so. so looking forward to it. We played, I mean, those bands are from like 10 years ago. Or, yeah, when we used to play shows with him like, like many Frank, years Frank ago. Martian, we were Glory Hole. Or yeah. And I think the food stamps play with Narrator and stuff. But I could be mistaken. Anyway, we're really excited about that. He's a an excellent, talented drummer. So maybe we'll get back out there and play some more shows. Well, we gotta see how it works out. Yeah, I don't right. Get ahead of myself, you know. <laughs> yes, we're just gonna be jamming now well, and enjoying each other's company, catching up. Yeah, we're gonna. Yeah, if it doesn't work out, we got other drummers. We'll, yeah, yeah. We're trying to find the right mix. 
we shouldn't count our chickens before they hatch, but yeah. all we can say is that we're looking forward to it. It'll be something nice and new, and it is with a heavy heart that I have to tell you guys that Joey, who's been a part of Blow Jam for three years, many of Blow Jam episodes, all the Blow Jam band music, he actually does, uh, he decided to, you know, take a break indefinitely, and we wish him the best. So, Joey, we love you. Hope all's well. And, uh, you know, get right. Do what you got to do. Yep. God, and Godspeed. Godspeed, Joey. <laughs> Speaking of Blow Jam band stuff and Blow Jam episodes, a really important figure to us had passed away this week by the name of Eddie Money. Oh, yeah. He's so important to us, the Eddie Money School of Rock. We had so many episodes where, Ryan, you were Randy. Oh, yeah. It's like this whole thing. I don't know if you probably didn't list every episode of Blow Jam if you're listening to this. But. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> but uh, we had something where it's like, I'm like, you think David Bowie had to put up with this shit? It was a joke at practice. And I'd be like, you think Eddie Money had to put up with this? Like, yeah, I think he did. And then uh, but, uh, it turned into a bet where we were like, I was Randy Money, Eddie Money's brother, and I'm running his school of rock to like teach people how to do saxophone solos. And, and you were like a Nazi about it. Yeah, really Nazi about it, like about like like uh like that movie Whiplash mm-hmm. with uh, D K Simmons, right? Or J K JK. J K Simmons, right? We just screamed that. We even did a spoof of that. Yeah, we did a spoof. I'm screaming at Joe. And stuff. Called Russian <laughs> Dragon. You're Russian. You're Dragon. Russian on your Dragon, Joe. But, I, uh, I yeah, think was, Joe uh, harbored resentment over that, and that's why he left. I was just, no, I'm just kidding. It's all make I, don't know I know, it was it's funny. Been. I'm just making up shit. That's funny. Uh, but, uh, yeah. He was really important. We saw him at Speedy Fest. The, the spirit of synchronicity, I guess. Uh, anybody played the Speedy Fest, which is a thing that happens in Binghamton. If you don't know what a Speedy is, it's a marinated piece of chicken. Yeah, chicken cubes that you put into, like, a steak roll. Yeah, it's almost like a kebab. Kebab. It's like a kebab, but, like, way better. It's, like, the best thing you could... It is pretty yummy. It's hard to explain, but if you ever had one, you're, you're like, fuck, man, speedies forever. I was <laughs> vegetarian for a couple years, and I broke it by getting drunk and eating a speedy, and I'm like, I can't go back now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're so good. But anyway, uh, yeah, he played the speedy fest, and, like, fucking rocked out. He rocked out. And I was actually... Because we went there as a joke. But then I was like... This guy's amazing. He's actually really good. So. Well... Rest in peace, Eddie Money. R.I.P. Eddie Money. Uh, so we got some he sad news. He did it news. for you. He never did it for the money. That's what he said. Did it for you. I didn't do it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He was good. great. So that's it for news. Yeah. Ryan, do you want to do your oh, new yeah. podcast segment? Ryan's new podcast. Ryan's new podcast. Ryan's new podcast. Ryan's new podcast. Oh, no, no. <laughs> All right, so my number one is that Get Rich Nick. It's with host uh, Nick Turner and Nick Vetterat. They attempt to profit while teaching listeners the ins and out of uh, each money making endeavor. Let's do a few episodes. It's pretty funny. They do things like donating plasma, which isn't really worth it, you find out. <laughs> because you can't, you can only do it so much. It's not like you're going to, you can only do it like every couple you're months. You're going to run out of plasma. Yeah, so you're going to run out of money and plasma, and they don't pay that much. So they also try uh, horse betting, which is really risky. You're not going to win half the time. So uh, in the latest episode, they try earning money through the Task Rabbit app. Ever hear Task Rabbit? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a Task Rabbit. It's it's where you do any manual task for money. Uh, Whether it's picking up groceries yeah. or bringing you somebody something, or snaking someone's toe, or oh, even that much. Yeah, oh, um, wow. Yeah, or f- changing light bulbs. Just any task, you know, like maybe like an old person or someone can't do. And it, it's actually a really good way to make money. That's, they made the most money off the task rabbit thing. Holy shit. So it's pretty cool. It's a nice podcast. I like it. It's kind of funny. I'll have to subscribe. I'll subscribe right now. Well, it's really funny. They were uh, moving a... Because the one guy is kind of a germ- germaphobe. Uh, one of the Knicks. And they had to move a mattress. And he's like, oh, I don't, wanna, I don't know if I want to do that. And they're like, oh, it's fine. You know, like... But yeah, she like... <laughs> 
we're supposed to move the mattress from like upstairs to the downstairs, and uh, it, it was just covered in like pee and everything. <laughs> <laughs> so the one guy's like freaking out. It's pretty funny. It, but, well, for the sake of the podcast. But anyway, do you have a worked bit, out or well. Do you have a thing? Do I have a thing? Well, I do have a segment, but honestly, you should take the lead with it, which is Dahlia's True Crime Segment. Dahlia's True Crime Segment. Oh, no, (laughs) Joe! (laughs) Honestly, it's a podcast that you told me about, so you should talk about it. It's called Hitman. Fuck, it's not mine. Oh, shit. I thought you were going to do it in my segment. Oh, it's okay, well... Hitman's a podcast about a book called Hitman, a 1980 a technical manual for independent contractors. It was published in 1983 by Paladin Press. It's written by Rex Farrell, which is a fake name. The book is an, 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 the book's like an instructional manual like that shows people how to fucking kill people. For hire. <laughs> yeah, kill people and get away with it. And it's hosted by journalist Jasmine Morris. As to all, all the episodes so far, it's really fucking good. Uh, it's about how Tiffany Horn's mother, eight-year-old brother, and a close family friend were found murdered. And the murderer used the book Hitman as a blueprint to carry out his task. So, whatever you want to say about it. And he left, like, no evidence behind. Yeah. So, it was obviously very efficient. The book's been pulled from the shelves, so if you're curious, you can't get it. Um, I just, I really enjoyed it, and I was like, this story sounds kind of familiar. Oh, because Case File did it. Uh, I said Case File weird because the host is Australian. So he's like, Case File. Case File. And it's funny because Dan Harmon was talking about him. He couldn't remember what the show was, but he's like, anytime I hear the podcast, it makes me want to work at my Australian accent. And I'm like, same here, mate. <laughs> What that hat, mate? I like that hat, mate. So it is a fucked up story. And I like this podcast because it goes way in depth with it. And yeah, it's pretty fucking fucked up. I think it's a must listen. I'll give it five stars. Five stars? Yeah. I Thank you for reminding me I about listen, our... I listened to like four episodes of it. I couldn't stop it. No, you're really disappointing me because we forgot about our arbitrary rate rating system and now all of a sudden you're throwing five stars in the mix. It's like, like you boring the, basic bitch. It's arbitrary and this is five stars. Oh, that is your arbitrary rating, which is five stars? Yep. Okay. I buy it. It's going to happen at some point. Yeah, it's going to have some stars in there. I'm glad you got it out of the way. Yep. Man. I got black holes, too. So. Oh, you have black holes? Yeah, so don't worry about it. Okay, okay. I totally forgot about our rating system. If this is your first podcast, Pod Smash episode, we like to give things like five airplanes and a roller skate and, like... Some cheesecake. I'm done, by the way. I ain't got nothing. You know, Johnny Pemberton was doing that. He was like, I listened to his episode today. He had uh, Mel uh, Rodriguez on, the guy from, uh, you know him? He's from Breaking Last, Bad. Last Man on Earth, Breaking mm-hmm. Bad. Yes. Better Call Saul. Oh, yeah. He's great. Anyway. Yeah, he he, he had an arbitrary rating system for their rating songs. He's like, I give it six kisses and three giraffes. <laughs> well, he ripped us off because I've been yeah. doing this for like a year. Come on, Johnny. Yeah. All now, right, Johnny. Now I know you're listening. Give me some fucking credit, bitch. Come on. No, we love Give you. Some Sorry, money. Johnny. I need money. Yes. <laughs> no, we don't need anything. I don't need money. It's fun. We appreciate right. that. My number two was uh, I Hate Talking About Myself. <laughs> <laughs> I like that name. It's a show where Netflix stars interview themselves. Basically, they pull questions written on pieces of paper all mixed up from a bowl. I listened to a few episodes. They're pretty short. They're like 8 to 10 minutes. This is the one with Natasha Leone. There's one with like Ben Affleck. There's one with Nicole Byer I listened to. It's an interesting concept. It's kind of fun to just hear people pull questions out of a bowl and then answer them. It's, it's funny to hear people interview themselves. It's kind of funny. That is a good concept. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was cool. Nice. They have to be like Netflix stars. So. And my number third was Hitman, but we already that, so... Okay, great. Let's talk about nays. Nays. Ryan uh, and I have the same (coughs) nay, and Ryan has an extra (laughs) nay. So, once again, please take the lead. All right. My nay is the Joe Rogan Experience. It's a comedy podcast hosted by Joe Rogan. (laughs) 
And this episode, his guest was Nick Bastrom, a Swedish philosopher at the University of Oxford. It was just annoying that uh, Joe kept arguing with him about simulation theory. Nick was really, like, breaking it down well, really explaining it well. Joe obviously doesn't understand probability. Because he was explaining from, like, a probability, like, aspect, you know. He basically said that either humans will destroy themselves before they achieve superintelligence, you know, and create simulation. You know, to, they would destroy themselves like an apocalypse or, like, some sort of, like, nuclear war. Mm-hmm. And, uh, either... Or people will achieve superintelligence through AI and decide not to run simulations. Or as, we already in as our a one precautionary or... thing. Uh-huh. Or the most likely thing is that we already achieved superintelligence and we are in a simulation. But Joe couldn't. He couldn't grasp it. He couldn't grasp it. Talking in circles, but not only. But like... he's like, he's like, how about right now is what reality is, and we're just on the precipice of creating these things and he's like yeah and like he's like but then we create a simulation and he's like well then it's one or the other you know it's like what if you decide not like but he was not getting like the probability aspect of it the uh <laughs> conversation is just like how ryan explained it in the speech that ryan explained it which is just like very confusing. Joe Rogan was super confused. But he's like, no, now it's reality. He's like, ah, you don't know that. <laughs> you don't know that. And also, just the fact that he was arguing with this expert yeah, was right. very upsetting. I had to turn it off. It's like, you know what, Joe? Ask him questions instead of saying things like they're facts, when, even when you're not getting anything. It's just it's fucking a, bullshit. It's great of one in a million that right now, this is the first time we're doing this. <laughs> right. That's all. Yep. All right. So that's with a dumb the, one. With the laws of probability. So it, it was really hard. He was like trying to break it down with like a. With a fucking flipping, idiot. Flipping a, flipping a coin. Yeah. I don't know. But Just whatever. because you flip uh, heads two times doesn't mean you got to hit flip tails. It's like it never existed. It's a fucking human bias. Hey, man, it's probability. Permutation, computations. Get your shit together, Joe. Yeah, Joe, like, fucking lay go off back. The, lay off the ayahuasca. Just because you talk to smart people doesn't mean that you know a goddamn thing. All right, what's your next one? You got two. All right, so my my second name is the Joe Rogan Experience. <laughs> it's a comedy podcast hosted by Joe Rogan. <laughs> <laughs> in this episode, his guest was Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd believes in Bigfoot, aliens, like Chupacabra, and every other fucking conspiracy thing out there and that's fucking super annoying. And that's something that Joe Rogan, so, I imagine, likes. That's my name and I give it five black holes. Ooh. See the scandalous. See the stars before? Mm-hmm. Black holes. Mm-hmm. I like it. But I'm disappointed because I really like Ghostbusters. You know, like, that was like, so long ago. I like, oh, I like Saturday Night Live too, the Coneheads. And sure. It's like, why is it he took a turn for the worst many years ago. Something happened, I guess. Yeah, fuck him. He kind of lost his mind. But he's rich and he loves these conspiracy theories. Mm hmm. All right. Special shout outs. It is Thursday, September 12th. Wow, my phone just went off. Is Guess what mean? podcast that was <laughs> that just went off? What? The Majority Report wow. with Sam Cedar. I've actually never talked about him on Pod Smash and, uh,. It's it's a podcast that I like to have in the background when I'm working. Kind of tune in and out. It ain't bad. Majority report. Majority. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, my shout out, special shout out is uh, Blow Jam. We had Yard Party on. You should check that one out. Mm-hmm. Good guys. You, go. you got in the closet with Deal. Seven minutes in heaven. More like 18. Tw- tw- 18 minutes. 22, okay. yeah. Well, it's two guys, so. And they're, like, big. <coughs> they're big dudes. Zach especially has got, like, guns for days. It was poking me in the eyes. Really? He was poking me? With his biceps. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing oh, happened. Man. I am a monogamous married woman. Do you have a shout-out? I do. And that would be... Um, this is Uncomfortable, a podcast that's about... Uh, well, it's from Marketplace, and it's just, it's all fiscal, but it's all also personal, just how people deal with money and how people share money matters. This one's called Everyday Liars, and who in the world has not lied about 
their fiscal situation, like how much money they have, whether you want to appear more wealthy or whether you want to appear like you don't have that much money. Everything is related to your friends, at least in this episode. I mean, there's so much more, but it's just like you want to be on even keel with your friends. So if your friends like don't have that much money, you don't want to appear like, you know, that you're way better off. And it just makes me think about my own experiences, which is just don't talk about money and just uh, stay even. All right. This is Uncomfortable with uh, host Nairima Reis. Oh, I never really cared about money. But it is weird. Uh, it's weird to talk. I don't like people talking about it. I don't know. Yeah, kind of like Joe. It's like kind of like... What, Joe was laying out his budget with us? I'll, I'll just pay for people, you know? Like, I know. If they can't afford it. Right. But. Well, whatever. Might make them feel awkward. Maybe that's part of the reason. Being too generous and then they, you know, can't pay you back. Maybe it makes them feel bad. I don't know. Huh. But whatever. Yeah, whatever. We'll figure that out some other time. All right, so my shout-out number two is Undone. It's a really good show on Amazon Prime Video with Rosa Salazar and Bob Odenkirk. Hey, this is a podcast review show. But I'm shouting this out. It's part real and part cartoon. It's rotoscope. Cell shading? It's like Waking Life and uh, Scanner Darkly. Mm Mm-hmm. It's really trippy. It is really good. It kind of, like impacted my dreams a little bit, which I really like. We watched them all, man. It was, like, blowing our minds. Yes, it was great. Very good. It's not a podcast, but watch that shit. And uh, my number three is The Dark Crystal, Age of Resistance. (laughs) Why are you doing that? It's on Netflix. Watch that. That blew my mind, too. (laughs) Everyone said it was bad, and I was like, fuck, this is awesome. Oh, it was way better than the original. Everyone's like, the original was so much better. I'm like, no, it wasn't. That it looks like shit. It wasn't the 70s, dude. It looks like shit. And the storyline wasn't <laughs> that great. They still use puppets this time, and they're all, like, handcrafted. And, like, yeah. They fucking painted the sets, and, like, fuck. They did it with care. CG and shit, you know? So. Very careful. Way better, man. But whatever. Watch I always... It. Dark Crystal, man. Um, there actually was a Matt D'Elia is Confused podcast where he talked about, like, everybody doing reboots and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I never liked reboots either, but at the same time, with the technology that we have these days, Just like, let's reboot. go back. Let's go back and make things look cool and amp it up. So I understand, and people our age in our 30s and 40s, we're driving <laughs> the creative industry. It is our time. Yeah, it's so our generation. all these reboots are, like... Aim Eleven. Toward, aim yeah. towards us, yeah. Yep. And so our kids can share it or have a stake in it. Yeah. But I think that they did this one right, huh? and I can't believe so many people didn't like it. It's fucked up. But anyway, uh, that's it for Blow Jam. That is it for Blow Jam. Please follow us oh, on the Pod social Smash. medias. Well, Blow Jam presents Pod Smash. Or whatever we are. Yeah. Something. I don't know. Like, I hope it's not confusing. Every week we review podcasts because we're obsessed with podcasts. Every other week we do the real Blow Jam thing, which is talking about music with talented musicians and playing music. So there you go. There's always comedy undertones. And anyway, I shouldn't be explaining you, our podcast, like, 87 episodes into it. You wanted to get a separate stream, but, like, what's the point? You know, separate feed? You know? Mm, yeah, that's true. There's no point. Know. There's no point to it. Well, we'll figure this out off air. Yeah. And so, please, let me do my little pandering. Follow us on the social medias. And we've almost hit, like, 500,000 downloads this year. And... The crazy thing is that we don't have, like, any reviews online. We got <laughs> mad listeners, but nobody takes the time to review us. So, please, wherever but you're listening... these 500,000 people? Just fucking write a review, man. Maybe it's just one person who likes us, like, 500,000 times. Maybe, if that's yeah. you, please write some reviews. So, wherever you get your podcast... It's me, I'll write a review. So. Wherever you're listening to podcasts... It was please. me this whole time. Oh, it was you, and you never reviewed... Oh, here I am. I would thinking, never review. Here I am thinking that we have an audience, and it's just you. Anyway, I know that that's not true. Please just let me spit out this pandering, Ryan. Which is please, ju- please, guys, like just give us a review. Give us a good review. Um, we'll suck yeah. your dick. Suck your dick, man. Yeah, we'll suck just your give, dick for a good give me, review. Give me five stars, man. I'll suck your dick. 
dude. Yeah. Okay. Here's the deal. <laughs> Fill out. Give us five stars and a nice review, and Ryan will suck your dick. I will. Well, we love you. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>